and it so it is very important for the obgyn to know the how what is this act and how to deal the medico legally with this so this is the this was the introduction of the poxo uh, i mean introduction of the topic today and i request our dr rajasri paladi honorable secretary general of kasoga to just introduce this topic of poxo in short uh, my yes uh, madam uh, yeah. pranamams to everybody mc patel sir uh, rekha rajendra and chairperson of uh, public awareness committee dr shanta durge ma'am and all the respected uh, delegates who have logged in for this interesting session we all know that uh, children uh, largely remain a very soft target for all kind of offenses just by the nature of the age and as per the consensus of 2011 there are 472 million children in india which the size must have grown much more uh, uh, by now until 2012 we didn't have a regulation uh, regarding the abuse or uh, the sexual harassment for the children the only legalization which existed until then was in uh, 2003 the goa children's act which gave in some legislation for the children protection but until 2012 november 14th it has been a uh, endowment or enactment which has been set so it is very very important that we all know that children have their rights and children need to be supported and protected as rightly said because any trauma caused in the childhood is going to leave a deep impact on the child on the, and not only destroys the uh future of the child but also the entire family gets affected when any wrong things happen with a, any member in the family especially so the children i would like to congratulate dr shanta durge for bringing up this topic regarding the awareness and um a message which can be conveyed by none other than dr mc patel sir who is the master in the legal uh, proceedings in our uh, obgyn and uh, i would like to hear more from this about uh, the poxo act from the master himself and dr shanta durge has been uh, always been an activist for the uh, against the female feticide or infanticide and now extending uh, more awareness about many things actually the public awareness committee can spread in a lot of message across the community and uh, children being very very important and crucial in the formation of any society any nation any organization it is imperative that we all protect the mental physical social and emotional well being of the children thank you so much for having me on this program and i wish that so many such awareness uh, programs be uh, done under the uh, chairmanship of dr Shanta Durge madam and we are all eagerly waiting to listen more from Dr MC Patel sir over to you sir thank you uh, thank you dr rajasri uh, ma'am for a nice introduction of the chapter and even some nice words about me and uh, now i request dr shailaja uh, to introduce uh, dr Milin, our chairperson and the honourable guest, Dr. Milin Shah, Dr. Uh, Shanta Durge, and Dr. Arekha Rajendra Kumar. Uh, over to Dr. Shailaja Bidri, ma'am. Hello. First, I will introduce Dr. Shailaja Bidri, ma'am, who is the HOD at BLD. medical college bijapur and she is the ec member of north zone kasoga 2023 and uh, in the academic she has presented many national and state conferences papers publication in national and international journals a uh, faculty for various regional state and international conferences she has received many awards like senior scientist award best doctor award in her field international research project including champions trial etc public awareness she has talked on pph and menstrual hygiene in vijaypura she has arranged so many cancer screening camps and member of district mtp committee so ma'am you please introduce uh, dr midin sha dr rekha rajendra kumar and myself over to you ma'am
डॉक्टर शैलजा मैडम डॉक्टर शैलजा मैम हेलो हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल या या यू आर ऑडिबल मैम ओके it is my proud privilege to introduce dr shantha durge first because she is organized this cme she is a korea government siliguri aicog 1997 for original research work on female pt side distinguished community service award at aicog 2007 kolkata many poster awards at aicog and state conferences godfrey philips bravery award uh, orissa 2009 many state awards like faculty at many aicog state conferences till today uh, kasoga chairperson for a public awareness committee 2023 and 25 she is selected all india radio talk on female pt side body donation body and organ donation more than 40 in short in short Please, please be short. She is active for save girl child to protect the girl rights. I I welcome you, Madam Shanta Durga. You have taken lot of trouble to organize this. Thank you. And next, I am going to introduce Dr. Milli Shah here. Got many. <laughs> it is a uh, pages only to introduce uh, Milli Shah. I know Milli Shah since long time, and uh, he is a uh, president of uh, Indian Society of Perinatology and Reproductive Biology, president of IMA, chairman of Safe Motherhood Committee, uh, founder president of uh, Infertility High Risk Foundation, honorary secretary of uh, Federation of Asia Ocean Perinatal uh, Societies, vice president of Foxy, and president elect uh, Indian Society of Perinatal Diagnostic. Therapy in 2019 to 21. Deputy Secretary of General, uh, Indian Society of Aesthetic and uh, Regenerative Gynecologist. He wrote many journals and visited many countries uh, to deliver a lecture. More than the uh, 30 countries, including UK, US, and all over the India. And he has got uh, he authored a book. So hypertensive disorders in pregnancy and pelvic organ prolapse he has contributed many chapters to the publications of many books and he has scientific he has conducted many scientific and international and national scientific papers on his credit part of the research team and active rotarian over to you sir and next i am going to continue introduction of uh, rekha rajendra uh, rekha Rajendra Kumar. Rajendra. Uh, she has got. Uh, it is a very proud privilege to introduce her as she has uh, awarded with the uh, first rank in MD University examination, seventh rank in Bangalore University MBBS, and all over topper ICOG reproductive medicine and seventeen awards and uh, five felicitation, including one international and uh, three state awards. Position held practicing gynecologist uh, for the last past thirty one years. President elect uh, B S O G twenty three to twenty four and invited faculty more than seven hundred state, national and international conferences. Uh, South Zone Coordinator Foxy Infertility Committee and chairman for uh, many this one uh, A R T and Infertility Committees Kasoga two thousand twenty two to twenty three and chairperson of Ethics and Medical Legal Committee. And uh, she joined our new secretary for Abiana 21, Foxy, Figo, and uh, Sofog, and uh, BSOG international conferences. Many other awards she has got, and uh, peer reviews for many original articles, and more than hundred television and radio talks. Over to you, madam. I am in a fast to introduce everybody in a short time because because of short of time. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shailaja. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shailaja, Madam, for uh, introducing oh, all you, these persons. And uh, now, I will introduce uh, Patel, the main speaker of. Uh, please show the slide, Arun. Hello, Mr. Arun. Yeah, Madam is showing. Yeah. madam you can start sir cv is there shanta madam hello shanta madam i think she has lost the connection again shanta madam Arun, will you call her? Oh, 
ओके मैडम ओके मैम मोबाइल जॉन आगब thank you mr arun so i have going to, some network problem was there so i could not contact in between so dr mc patel who is from ahmedabad and a consultant obstetrician gynecologist and mainly he is recognized as a medical legal counselor and i think he has done so many webinars and so many lectures and speeches on medical legal series so he he was he is a very right person of today's webinar and uh, he was the vice president of foxy 2018 organic organizing secretary one one later organizing secretary as she was to told yeah organizing secretary as she was to told in 2017 chairperson ethics and medical legal committee foxy 2011 to 13 honorary secretary state organization of gynecologists and obstetrician of gujarat and honorable member of national inspection and monitoring committee pcp ndt act government of india honorable member state supervisory board pndt committee gujarat state and president ahmedabad obgy society a uh, national president of national medicals organization and honorary surgeon in indian red cross organizing chairperson vekanand nmo coin and president swain club etc he has held so many post and mainly he he talks on medical legal series and today we are eager to listen from you sir on the hoxo act over to you sir thank you uh uh let me allow to share my screen arun nim screen tell me so uh is any guest has to say something or straight way i have to start milind or so yeah, you can start straight way sir with the okay no uh, issue no issue yeah. and milind is not there also okay okay and uh, exactly how much time do i have uh one 40 minutes sir okay greeting from uh, greeting from statue of unity tallest statue of world and we all are proud of that statue and today we are going to discuss oxo act challenges and controversies dilemmas and controversies so warm welcome all the delegates and wishing you a litigation free practice at the outset i would uh, like to thank kasoga public awareness committee and dr santa durge madam in particular for inviting me to share my views about the subject and before i go to the subject it is my humble appeal less than one minute shubham karo tu kalyanam arogyam sukha sampadam respected seniors and dear colleague serving foxy for years together on this auspicious day with folded hands and down head i seek your guidance blessings and support to endorse my candidature for the post of foxy president year 2026 election year 2024 consistently working for foxy and trying to visit even a smaller society and to assist our common foxian friends in any given situation i have tried to serve foxy i assure to serve foxy in the same way with the same zeal and enthusiasm patka antim lakshya nahi siha san chadte jana liye sabhi ko saath aage hai badhte jana so please endorse my candidature for post of president foxy election year 2024 usually any of my talk i start with this question is it worth discussing yes 
And if it is yes, then why? Because as far as litigation part is concerned, medical litigations are increasing in number constantly and steadily. And unluckily, we gynecologists rank first. So our uh, ignorance of law is never an excuse. Because as soon as any act, any law, any ordinance passes in government gadget, it is presumed by law that each and every citizen of India knows that law and ignorance law can never be an excuse. And our role, our situation is just like this innocent bird. Gynecologists are just like this innocent bird, always at danger of a cobra of law. And as far as today's talk is concerned, Oxo Act, Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act 2012. It was enacted in 2012. And again, some amendment came in 2019. So this act actually addresses to protect children from offenses of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and pornography, and provide establishment of special courts for trial for such offenses and for matter concerned therewith or incidental there too. So as far as this act is concerned, so under this, this act, which child, so any person below age of 18 years are considered child in this act. And it is gender equal. So it addresses male and female both, girls and boys both, uh, this act addresses. And as far as area of POXO Act is concerned, sexual harassment, sexual assault, aggravated form of sexual assault, penetrative sexual assault, aggravated form of penetrative sexual assault, and using child as a pornographic purposes. These are the areas covered by POXO Act. And as far as sexual harassment is concerned, it is defined in section 11 of POXO Act, when such person with sexual intent, here word, sexual intent is very much important, utters any word or makes any sound, or makes any gesture or exhibits any object or part of body with intention that such word or sound shall be heard or such gesture or object or part of body shall be seen by child and makes child exhibit his body or any part of his body so as it is seen by such person or any other person or shows any object to a child in any form or media for pornographic purposes or when such person with sexual intent repeatedly or constantly follows or watches or uh, contacts a child either directly or through electronic, digital or any other means or threatens to use any form of media, a real or fabricated depiction through electronic film or digital or any other mode of any part of body of child or involvement of child in a sexual act or entices a child for pornographic purpose or gives gratification thereof. So it is sexual harassment. And as far as sexual assault is concerned, under section seven, whoever with sexual intent, everywhere sexual intent word is very important in this act, touches vagina, penis, anus, breast of child, or makes child to touch vagina, penis, anus, breast, or such person, or any other person, or does any other act with sexual intent, which involves physical contact without penetration. Here, penetration is not necessary. Mere physical contact is enough to establish the crime. It is said to be commit sexual assault. When it is considered as an aggravated form of sexual assault under section 9. When abused child is mentally ill or abuse is committed by a person in a position of trust or authority vis-a-vis -vis the child like a family member, police officer in police station, teacher in school, doctor in hospital. So they are in a position of trust. And if they become say, accused, then it becomes an aggravated form of sexual assault. As far as penetrative sexual assault part is concerned, it is defined in section three. If he penetrates his penis or any object or part of body to any extent, 
into vagina, mouth, urethra, anus of a child or makes the child to do so with him or any other person or he manipulates any part of the body of the child to penetrate into vagina, urethra, anus or any part of body of a child or makes the child to do so with him or any other person is considered as a penetrative sexual assault. And one more area, he if he applies his mouth to the penis, vagina, anus, urethra of the child or makes the child to do so to such person or with any other person, it is considered as a penetrative form of sexual assault. And aggravated penetrative sexual uh, assault, same way aggravated form of sexual assault when victim is mentally ill and accused person is in a position of trust, just like family member, police officer, teacher or doctor, in this situation, it is considered as a aggravated penetrative sexual assault. And there are uh, some provisions of punishment also, uh, and it uh, ranges from three years of imprisonment to lifetime imprisonment. And in few of the cases, death sentence can also be awarded as per the different areas of sexual assault, uh, I mean, uh, sexual offenses. Say uh, sexual harassment, assault, aggravated form of sexual assault, penetrative sexual assault, and aggravated form of penetrative sexual assault. One more area, use of child for pornographic purpose. There is a punishment of five years and fine for first time. And if it is second time or subsequently, then imprisonment may extend up to seven years and fine. And use of child for pornographic purpose, whosoever using a child or children for pornographic purpose, and they are considered as a use of child for pornographic purpose. But if any person himself or herself are also involved with child in pornographic purposes, then all the sections just we mentioned above, section 3, section 5, section 7, 9, and 11 will be considered with that accused person. As far as fine part is concerned, when fine imposed, uh, 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 as we mentioned earlier, it should be paid to victim for medical expenses or rehabilitation program of that very victim. So fine collected from accused will be given to victim. There was amendment in 2018 and 19, as far as this POXO Act is concerned, and some amendment came in IPC also, section 376 DA. Wherever woman under 16 years of age is raped by one or more persons, then each acting in a furtherance of common intention of them shall be imprisoned for lifetime and with fine. But when child is less than 12 years and one or more persons are involved acting in a furtherance of common intention of them shall be punished with a life imprisonment and fine or with death in few of the cases. So these were amendments came into existence in 2018 and 19 as far as this POXO Act implementation is concerned. As far as abatement is concerned, a person abets an offense who instigates, engages or intentionally aids by any act or illegal omission and doing that offense will be considered as a abatement. And same way it is prescribed in section 107 to 120 of Indian Penal Code to instigate, to help or to encourage any person to constitute crime is abatement. So by instigating a person to, com uh, to commit an offense, by engaging in a conspiracy to commit it, or by intentionally aiding a person to commit it is a abatement. So all they are considered in case of POXO also. But with this uh, basic information related to POXO, let us see how it implemented or implication in our day-to-day -day practice in OBGY. So doctor is the first point of reference in confirming that child has been or being abused 
uh, whenever child is brought to him. So whenever child is brought to a gynecologist or any uh, other registered medical practitioner, what is the duty of doctor? And first is consent. So before approaching examination or any treatment, consent is to be taken. So who can give consent in this type of situation for examination? So any victim, if she is more than 12 weeks, then she can give consent for examination. Mm -hmm. But who can give consent for surgical intervention or anesthesia? If in a case of sexual assault uh, or a penetrative form of sexual assault, if she is bleeding, if some foreign body inside and surgical intervention is required, then can she give consent for surgical intervention? No. In this situation, consent from guardian is very much required. Consent should be written. It should be free. It should be voluntary. It should be comprehensive and it should be informed. So uh, uh, victim should be informed about the purpose of uh, uh, examination, a result or possibility of result of examination and implications of examination. It should be explained well in advance at the time of taking consent. She may refuse before or during examination. She can refuse to give consent for examination even before examination or even during examination. Also, she can withdraw her consent for examination. As far as history part is concerned, so consent is taken and before examination, we have to go for history. So occurrence of incidents, first time or it is repeatedly. So many a time, uh, the, the, this inquiry should be made. So when it occurred last time, so when it occurred first time, whether threat was given or not, and nature of assault, anal, vaginal, oral penetrations, or any other form should be inquired with the history. One very important point, time is incidence, because many times patient is brought late and many a time for gynecologists or any other registered medical practitioner becomes difficult to form opinion. So time since incidence is also very much important. History of bath after incidence. If patient has taken bath after incidence, then it becomes very difficult many a time to uh, find some uh, evidences also. History of change of clothes. Mm -hmm. This is also very much important uh, part as far as history is concerned. Any other complaint of, say, for example, pain, bleeding, or any other complaint we should ask at the time of history. Say, for example, vaginal or anal pain, bleeding, and or discharge following the events. Is there any blood in uh, panties or in toilet should also be inquired at the time of history. Any difficulty or pain with voiding or uh, defecating should also be inquired. Any urinary or fecal incontinence, illustrative books, body parts, or a doll can be also used at the time of uh, uh, taking history to elicit certain points as far as history taking is concerned. One more area. Is she compatible with guardian at the time of examination? Because at a time, person who has brought to a child for examination. I think there is some disturbance. Arun, please mute Dr. Kumudini. Please mute. mute. Except sir, everybody you mute. Please. Host can mute. That is what is Arun, sir. So, uh, we should inquire with patient herself or himself that if you are she will be comfortable. Host, you are requested to mute everybody. Arun, please, please mute everyone except sir. So we should require that whether a victim is comfortable with presence of guardian at the time of examination 
because many a time child may not be comfortable because in few of the condition it may happen that person who has brought the child could be accused so presence of parents as such under section 27 of pocso act we should or we may allow uh, a parents inside at the time of examination but if victim is not comfortable then we can deny also and medical history should cover any allergy immunization status and medications e battle c has taken we should inquire with that also now very important part is examination part so examination in a sensitive manner painless manner and with all privacy to be maintained and least disturbing to the child simply worded open ended non leading question such as what when where how tell me some more thing followed by and when and then what happened so it should be in a very simple language so that child can communicate with us as far as uh, this history part is concerned and at the time of examination no uncomfortable question we are not supposed to ask any question which may put a child into uncomfortable condition child with physical disability should be held to assume position necessary for examination using child's word or using drawings for body parts may make child more comfortable many a time if we go with some charts or doll or so child will be comfortable to answer certain question stop the examination if child indicates discomfort or withdraws permission to continue examination and it is very obvious that normal or non specific examination doesn't rule out sexual abuse so as far as duty on part of uh, doctor who is going to examine patient is and we have to uh, keep in mind if child resists the examination then physical examination should not cause any trauma <coughs> sorry it may be wise to defer the examination <coughs> fears and anxiety many time child has a fear uh, about examination and she will be worried also so we should explain before examination and we should uh, 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 take her confidence and then we should start examination examine very small children in mother's lap it is also very much advisable a child should be in a lap of her mother and we can examine if child still refuses examination may be deferred or abandoned no force should be applied as per the examination part is concerned it is also very much important to note height weight of patient note any bruise burns scars rashes on skin with the size location pattern and color of all such injuries any signs of force and or restraints around neck around breast around perineum around thigh should also be mentioned <clears throat> and it should also be mentioned whether survivor <clears throat> was menstruating at the time of assault or at the time of examination <clears throat> if she is menstruating at the time of examination second examination is required of course th this examination cannot be postponed examination is to be done but again second examination should also be advised the same applies to bathing dosing defecating urinating and use of spermicide after assault is very much important collection of evidence and documentation of those evidence so document presence during conversation with the child and document questions asked and answer given by child in your history in the child's own language carefully collect clothing especially underwear the most likely positive site for evidence and it may be useful for dna testing etc etc and it should be preserved for forensic evidences any stain on underwear or clothes say for example semen blood saliva or any lubricant so all this should be collected as an evidence and children often report weeks or months after abuse <clears throat> so in this situation 
many a time physical injury on genital or anal region usually heal within a few days and that is why it becomes a very important point for medical provider should always consider differential diagnosis and alternative explanation for physical signs and symptoms <clears throat> after examination after collecting all the evidences and uh, documentation treatment part is also very much important so if patient is comfortable you can treat and if at all sedation or anesthesia is required then with consent of guardian we may uh, 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 consider sedation or general anesthesia for examination as well as for treatment also say, say for example if she is bleeding and if uh, some suturing is required and anesthesia is required then we can also go for that also this is also a very much important point prophylaxis for std and hiv we should consider that and prophylactic treatment should also be given and for that counseling and testing for hiv and for other std should also be done with patient we should counsel patient for that also formation of opinion so taking history taking ex after examination and collecting the all this evidence now we have to form opinion and we have to report to to the police or to cwc that is child welfare committee because under poxo act uh, 2012 it is very specifically mentioned in act notwithstanding anything contained in code of criminal procedure 1973 any person including child who has apprehension that an offence under this act is likely to be committed or has knowledge that such an offence has been committed he shall provide such information to special juvenile police unit or police station and under section 19 <clears throat> sub section 1 of poxo it is very much mandatory as far as reporting of case is concerned any person who has apprehension same way just i mentioned prior also apprehension that an offence under this act is likely to be committed or has knowledge that such offence has been committed to report it either to the special juvenile police unit or to local police and under section 20 when any person encounters with any material or object which are sexually exploitative of the child then it should also be reported to the police and if we fail to report there is a provision under section 21 imprisonment for 6 month or fine or with both so it is a serious matter and any person being a charge of any company or institution multi speciality hospital or so head of the institution shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend one year and with fine and the provision of sub section 1 shall not apply to a child under this act an expert as expert evidence in court is concerned once we have form opinion once we have inform police we have given all our uh, uh, opinion to the police we may be asked in court of law to have our expert evidence so at the time of uh, 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 being a expert witness how what is the role so deciding cases would be much easier if there is a clear physical evidence unfortunately often leaves no such evidence making difficult to prove it usually occurs in secret often even a prolonged period of time and doesn't always leave physical marks and child is usually the only eye witness so in this situation uh, a statement of child is also becomes very important and testimony of an expert medical witness can be useful based upon child history statements and medical examination in general opinion of medical professional are admiss admissible upon question such as insanity cause of disease nature of injury weapons use cause uh, uh, used to cause injury or death medicine poison sign of gestation so all these questions are related and they may be asked in court of law age determination 
by birth register, school living certificate, and ossification test can also be accepted. Doctor can appropriately conclude evidence of sexual contact and or recurrent trauma. He, she can state whether medical history and examination are consistent with my expert conclusion only and can exercise its decision in this regard, keeping in mind other evidences also. But as far as this POXO Act is concerned, there are certain situations we are facing in our day-to-day -day practice. Say, for example, 17 years old girl comes with her boyfriend and she asks for con contraceptive advice. What will you do? Can or will you advise? Because one side is a moral duty and other side is a law. Because if we do not advise, and if they have decided to go for sexual uh, 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 life, then they may end up into unwanted pregnancy. And again, they will come to us for termination of pregnancy. And other side is law. Because in eye of law, if you advise, then it becomes a case of abatement, just we described prior also. You are uh, helping them. You are aiding them to constitute crime. So it is a very difficult situation for us because uh, uh, as far as this amendment on uh, 2019 and IPC section 107 to 120, so it becomes a case of abatement. So we can advise them uh, as far as uh, health uh, uh, education is concerned, but we cannot prescribe contraception in this type of situation because it will be very difficult for us to face in court of law if at all somebody goes against us that you encourages them to constitute crime under POXO Act. So one can give them health education, but cannot prescribe contraceptive. It should be clear. Let us see one more situation. 16 years old girl is brought by her mother with complaint of vulvovaginitis with discharge per vagina. On examination, it is found to be a case of STD and she gives history of sexual exposure with her boyfriend also. So in this situation, what will you do? Of course, treat the patient, but inform police because she is 16 years old and she is case of, uh, uh, she is victim of POXO. Let us see one more situation. 18 years, six month old married girl, she is major, is brought by her mother with pregnancy of 39 weeks and she is for LSCS. What will you do? So if cesarean section is indicated, we have to go for cesarean section, but we have to inform police also because just now she is major, but at the time of conception, she was minor. So it becomes a case of POXO. We have to inform police. So with all this situation, carry home message is, one is under obligation to investigate properly with careful history <coughs> about sexual assault and if so, one has to inform police. Let us see one more interesting situation. 17 years old girl with her mother visits hospital with six weeks pregnancy for termination of pregnancy. Doctor explained that I will do termination of pregnancy, but I will have to inform police. And in this situation, patient and her mother refuses for the same, <coughs> sorry, and leave the hospital without taking any further treatment. So in this situation, what will you do? So even if patient doesn't take treatment further with you, then also you have to inform police. It is very much mandatory. Let us see one more interesting situation. Patient gives history of 20 years of age, primary, eight weeks pregnancy, willing for termination of pregnancy, center was registered, person was qualified, so pregnancy was terminated. After one month, police comes and police tells she was 17 years. So she falls under POXO Act. Why you didn't inform police? So these are some situations we face in our day-to-day OBGYN practice. So who is responsible to determine the age? Naturally, doctor is uh, responsible to determine the age. So you can inquire and ask for ID proof 
that is school leaving certificate election card aadhar card driving license etc or you can subject patient for clinical examination dental examination radiological investigation and you can have a opinion from forensic medicine department also if you are in a doubt about her age how to inform we have to inform police just we mention prior also so inform with acknowledgement because many a time if police go hostile that you didn't inform you never inform that you will be in a trouble in court of law so you should be in a position to prove that you inform police with acknowledgement so many a time police denies to record or denies to give acknowledgement so in this situation there are some other alternatives also dial 100 because it is recorded call and once you dial on 100 it will be recorded but before you start your conversation identify the person whom you are talking name of that very person police station officer buckle number date and time it is very much important you can send it by registry post also you can send it by mail telephone with recording on your mobile also you can inform and again identify the person whom you are uh, uh, giving information and record that call this is also a good acknowledgement inform higher officer if lower police station officer are not complying with our request then you can inform higher officer also and in this situation you can inform cwc also once you inform cwc that is child welfare committee they will be behind the police to take necessary action in this type of situation let us see one very interesting situation can a doctor refuse to exam examine a victim of sexual assault who come to the hospital for treatment citing that it is a mlc case and require police requisition and magistrate order so can one refuse to examine patient in this type of situation no under section 27 of poxo no need of police requisition and under rule of poxo act no need of magistrate order patient may come directly to you for examination and treatment when she is a case of victim and under section 357 of crpc doctor should examine and do need field treatment and then inform police and in one of the case which happened in karnataka uh, karnataka versus uh, manjara which happened in 2000 and rap cases are as a medico legal emergencies we should treat them as a medico legal emergencies one more area uh, or uh, one more situation 17 years old girl visits a private hospital with history of sexual assault doctor ask her to go to government hospital as it is a mlc case and has to be examined by government doctor only is it mandatory that victim of sexual assault has to be examined at government hospital only no it is not like this under section 357 of crpc any registered medical practitioner whether in government hospital or whether in private can examine that very patient and it is mandatory to all hospital irrespective of being government public se- sector or private sector to provide immediate medical care and treatment to the victim free of cost you have to give treatment free of the cost but when patient is settled then you can ask patient to give option whether she is going to be treated further at your hospital only and then after she will have to pay or she can be referred to any other hospital if she is not willing to continue treatment with you in your hospital is it necessary for female doctor only to examine sexual uh, violence victim this question is asked many a time over the past decades several high courts liberally interpreted section 53 of crpc so insisted sexual violence victim to be only examined by female doctors whenever available here word whenever available is very much important if female doctor is not available then male doctor can also examine and can treat patient of victim of sexual offense but 
this is suggest and this suggestion also has limitations because in criminal law amendment section 164 subsection a crpc year 2005 and section 27 of pocso act any doctor with whom a female victim consented can carry out the examination and problem resurface again insisting female doctor to examine a female child let us see one more interesting situation 17 years girl is in relation with her boyfriend when she fails to have her menses on regular due date and she got anxious and visited her doctor and she also worried she was already pregnant if she discloses she discloses to doctor about her several sexual relation with her boyfriend she also discloses she was worried about her conservative parents and how they would react whether she could continue her study or not and what is next step by doctor because in this situation when patient gives this type of history that her parents are very conservative whether to inform parents or not many a time this is the situation whether to inform police always yes whether to inform girl's parent against her wishes if she is more than 12 she can take decision whether parents are to be informed or not here in this case she is 17 years if she refuses we have not to inform we cannot inform whether to counsel girl about sex safe sex and advise about pregnancy and so as per a pregnancy part is concerned if she wants to continue pregnancy we have to give her antenatal check up dus hai to pakad dus kar gaya hai dus bhi to hai khatam kijiye pehle isko tab swell par hai na and treatment accordingly as per as her pregnancy part is concerned and if she wants termination then with all the requisites of mtp act we can terminate her pregnancy but product of conception is to be handed over to the police if she wishes to and for evidences so mandatory reporting to the police under section 19 of pocso act just we mentioned prior also and informing to the parents depends upon the patient when patient is more than 12 just i mentioned and therapeutic care that is pregnancy contraception std abortion psychological counseling all this should be taken into consideration let us see one more situation 16 year old patient victim of sexual assault was brought to your hospital for treatment mother insists on you to conduct medical examination but victim doesn't want examination what should you do so in this situation patient is 16 years when she is more than 12 years she can take decision whether to be examined whether not to be examined if she refuses you cannot force for examination of course you can counsel her what is the importance of examination and you can convince and if she becomes ready if she give consent then only you can examine patient a person 18 years old and above could consent for a medical examination which is ever invasive in nature so if surgical repair of injury mtp etc so any surgical intervention is required then consent should be given by major only so person should be more than 18 years so in this situation when patient is less than 18 consent of guardian is very much required in this type of situation let us see one more interesting situation 17 years old girl had eloped with her boyfriend and became pregnant with 16 weeks gestation and requested for termination of pregnancy she is not willing to reveal her boyfriend name and uh, requesting not to inform police her father is refusing to give consent for termination what should doctor do and which consent to take so the here is very tricky situation as far as informing police is concerned nobody's consent is required so you are under obligation to inform police but as far as mtp part is concerned guardian who is major who is mentally sign, uh, sound should give consent and in this situation father is not ready to give consent for termination of pregnancy 
In this situation, you can inform CWC also. So any person from C CWC can give consent for termination of pregnancy and you can terminate pregnancy. Because in this situation, any major person from CWC is a guardian of patient, school teacher, or in any hospital, head of the unit, head of the uh, uh, department, medical superintendent can also give consent for termination of pregnancy in this type of situation. So MTP is an invasive procedure and consenting person should be more than 18 years is the requisite. Uh, in this situation, when father has denied, consent of mother can also be taken. But usually in family, when father is denied, usually mother cannot, will not be ready to give consent uh, uh, because there could be some dispute in family also. But consent for panel of uh, senior doctors, any medical superintendent, RMO, CMO or HOD, just I mentioned prior also, can also be taken. And informed child welfare committee I also mentioned. In this particular case, what happened? In this case, CWC was informed. So father now became ready to give consent for termination of pregnancy and pregnancy was terminated. But now father was insisting for product of conception to be sent for further investigation. But <clears throat> girl says that she doesn't want to implicate her boyfriend with DNA analysis and why, what doctor should do in this type of situation Argument on part of father was that he have he has given consent for termination of pregnancy, so he can take decision. So in this situation, it is very clear, patient is more than 12 years, she can take decision whether product of conception is to be sent for further investigation or not, whether name of her boyfriend should, should be revealed or not, she is free to take decision. So in this situation, even if father insists to send product of conception for DNA testing, if she has refused, one cannot send and one cannot insist also. So it is very clear. She is 17 years old and can decide for medical examination, evidence collection, and concern for sending them for further investigation, thus product of conception also. So it is very clear. Let us see one more interesting situation. 16-year-old girl brought with alleged history of sexual assault by one of her family member on examination, no physical or genital injuries and no evidence of spermatozoa were found. What should be the I, opinion? I remember, Can remember, we remember give provisional year. opinion? Many times this situation occurs. So victim is used to an act like that of sexual intercourse. Opinion number two. An act of sexual assault neither be confirmed nor be refuted. Uh, opinion number three, no evidence suggestive of sexual intercourse. So in this situation, provisional opinion should be given immediately after examination based on history and finding. It should be a reasonable opinion. But whatever we opine, we should be in a a position to justify our opinion in court of law. So to conclude with Kerry Holmes, when minor is brought for examination and treatment for complaint about sexual abuse, responsibility of medical professionals being an expert increases many fold and responsible medical professional is under obligation to report to appropriate authority about any child of sexual abuse he comes to know during his professional medical duty. He has not only to examine and treat, but he has to form opinion whether sexual abuse has happened. And he is a very important person to be helpful as an expert witness to prove a crime of sexual uh, child sexual abuse. So in this type of situation, case-based approach helps the doctor in understanding and efficiently handling the cases of POXO. So it is mandatory reporting yet to be decided whether it is a ban or boon. But as on today, 
if patient is less than 18 and if we come to know that if she is a, a victim of sexual offense, then we are under obligation to inform police. Sorry. So all the stakeholders need to introspect and analyze cases as they are sensitive issues and act in best interest of victims and survivors. Because in so many districts of our India, early marriages are there, patients are marry, married, happily enjoying their married life, and many times they come with pregnancy. They are not for termination of pregnancy. They are to continue pregnancy and they want to deliver baby. But when she is less than 18, we have to inform police. Of course, in recent past only, there was judgment from Supreme Court. And at the time of giving judgment, Supreme Court has an observation that if marriage life is more than one year, if they are happily enjoying their marriage life, if doctor has not informed police, doctor will not be held responsible. But we are waiting for that copy of that judgment and we have to interpret that judgment exact which words Supreme Court has used. And then after we can uh, follow that judgment only. And till then, we have to inform police when patient is less than 18. So comply with the law of land because this is a very uh, strict uh, uh, act as far as some punishment part is concerned. So be vigilant in your practice, remain alert every time, otherwise be ready to face this type of situation. Take medical legal advice from point one if you are in a little doubt. This gentleman has so many staircases, but he doesn't know how to use them. So it doesn't matter how many resources you have, if you do not know how to use them, they will never be enough. So have some basic legal knowledge, always obtain medical legal advice whenever you are in doubt. So if you want to sleep like this, take tender care of your patient in this type of given situation, comply with the provisions of POXO Act, pray your almighty God before going to sleep and keep my visiting card below your pillow. I am always there to assist you in any given situation. If ever you need me, I will be just round the corner. Mm -hmm. I law of leopard, behind the person gynecologist and see the role of medical legal counselor, how he or she can be useful in any given situation. So please do not hesitate and have an opinion from medical legal uh, 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 expert. Enjoy litigation free practice. So, all the best. God bless you. Have a litigation free medical practice. With regards, salute to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please do not review. Please ask if any, any question, if chairpersons and time permits. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sir, it was a vast and really very informative session on uh, POXO Act and I am very thankful to Dr. Milin Shah who has joined from the Tokyo and uh, I request him to conclude on Sir's talk. Arun, please Please mute. Arun. Arun, please mute on. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, yeah. So, I am really uh, this is the exhaustive exploration of the POXO Act by Dr. M. C. Patel, sir. And I am really thankful to Dr. Bilin Shah, who has joined from the Tokyo on our request and I request him to conclude on the talk of Dr. M. C. Patel, sir. Please, Dr. Mirin Shah, please. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Shanta. In fact, I must apologize. Because of this time lag, I literally forgot <laughs> that timing is not already uh, uh, started. And in fact, we had a wonderful banquet just now with Her is Highness. Is the time now there, Milin? What is the, huh? time what is the time in Tokyo now? It's, it's almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10 p.m.? Yeah, 10 p.m., 10 night. And we had a wonderful banquet with Her Highness Princess of Japan, Akashi Nonomiya. 
and that's how you know i was in that hangover <laughs> because she was so humble and so nice about the women self because she herself suffered from placenta previa during her pregnancy and she was very close to obgyns thank you very much dr shanta for this wonderful opportunity because you know entire group who whom you are conducting this webinar are very close to me dr vidya dr vidya thumbi always says that milind you brought me in foxy and i always you know whenever i meet her i feel very happy and same thing with dr rajasri paladi whenever i invite her actually for any of my events she always makes it a point to travel and come to the those meetings from gulbarga i am also thankful to dr shailaj abidri rekha raja uh, rajendra kumar and dr uh, suman also because all of them were meeting quite frequently now what i can say about dr mc patel you know what i call him i call him as a manu bhai <laughs> because he is such a wonderful speaker yeah. Yeah. he mesmerizes he makes the impact of that particular topic uh, to all the uh, audience and that's how when it came to the pox so yes it's very tender and very important topic which we see in day to day life because when i was flying from singapore to tokyo i was watching movie a thursday where a young girl undergoes actually the rape and how she faces in the life and the drama she need to do to give a justice actually for her actually whatever she faced in the same way we see in day to day practice also i remember when we used to work for the child labor school uh, girls and boys they always used to say that we are getting molested at just for the want of lipsticks chocolates and all other things and quite few of them they just never speak about it but now we have realized there are so many angles which have been there with this child abuse and child insult and that's why i heard your little uh, second half of talk dr mc it was really wonderful we need to sensitize everyone one of very senior gynecologist my own city she did mtp for a 16 years girl and forgot to inform police she needed to close her practice in spite of all our efforts to you know convince police and the judiciary and still she is facing that music of all those problems related to the poxo act act so we need to know a b c everything about the poxo in our clinical practice to avoid problems related to this uh, child abuse act you know friends it's quite often that the women the girls they come to us they say that they are 19 years old and on paper when it happens it becomes a story whereby you know they are less than uh, 18 years old and then we need to again inform uh, the every authority about that particular thing quite often they are married they don't have any grudge they don't have any problem but still uh, we need to do that particular uh, informing informing the police very effectively many times the relatives they grumble they say no no how we can do that we are it's a marriage which has happened my pandit ji didn't say anything the people who attended the marriage didn't say anything why you are taking that particular onus the same question we put to the police commissioner and said now see this is what the people are saying about and we doctors face lot of problem so he said don't worry doctor we'll create a online link especially in my city what we could do that we started an online link whereby we just put it online the information to the police so no harassment in the station no questioning to the doctor uh, by the uh, police authorities if he or she is not cooperating with that particular doctor and the things are very easy so every obgyn should definitely know about it so dr shanta it's wonderful public awareness activity as well under your aegis of your committee of kasoga kasoga means you know very close to me since years because i stay nearby i can read kannada i can write kannada i can speak kannada oh. and that's why <laughs> they always enjoy okay. speaking with my patients who come all the way from various districts of the kannada and when i write prescription kannada they always feel very happy and they say how come you know as it is this because of my close friends all my obgyns who are in nearby cities sir you can write me. also yeah i can, can write, write read also kannada yeah. yes yes i can write i write my prescriptions kannada only that is my hobby Wonderful. and I, <laughs> great so thank you very much for this invitation though i am let i think i have not missed the bus i could definitely yeah. be with you and yes dr mc all the best for your venture as well which thank is coming you. in the year uh, thank you very sure with your hard work you are going to get through that as well my all wishes and blessings are definitely not blessings wishes are with you because i'm quite younger than you <laughs> great but good good thank you very much all my kannadiga friends 
for inviting me, Dr. Shanta, especially for reminding me to join. Otherwise, I would have missed this particular webinar. Yeah, actually, sir, I, yes. Actually, I was confused whether he will be there to conclude the sir's yes. talk. And you are the proper person to conclude <laughs> this talk. I, and, know, uh, I was in uh, lift when you called me and I said, oh my God, and immediately I logged in. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is commitment on part of Dr. Milen from Tokyo mm -hmm. to yeah, yeah. So he has joined this webinar. Yes. So, uh, uh, thank you, Malik. Thank you very much. He, thank you. He thank was you. so thank kind you. to join from there and he has assured me so many times, no, no, I will join, I will join. That's yes. why I was very sure of his joining. So yeah. nice. Thank you very much, Dr. Shanta. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Milin, is it a conference in Tokyo and what conference? Yeah, yeah. It is an FAO PS event. Uh, I am Secretary General of the Asia Oceana Federation of Perinatal Societies. Hmm. So I needed to conduct the executive meeting this morning. I'm doing general body meeting tomorrow. I'm having a talk day after tomorrow, as well as chairing a session on humor age. So all that we were discussing, you know, with amongst the various colleagues from almost 21 countries. We are coming out with some good projects, which I'm definitely going to bring it to Kasoga as well, because we need to work a lot actually for our women. And those experiences which I gathered from these people are really good, especially the princess of Japan. You know, she was princess. They warn us that no pictures, not directly speaking, but she came to every table, spoke with everyone, and she was really a great lady I ever met. In spite of her position, she was concerned. She said, OBG mind my clothes because I suffered a lot because of placenta previa. And that time the gynecologist rescued me. They make, made me, you know, the out of it and I'm alive now. So she was very kind to all of us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So that uh, though you were very busy, you joined the webinar and uh, made your impressive uh, so impressive concluding remarks on Dr. M. C. Patel, sir. And now I request Dr. Rekha Rajendra Kumar to go for the questions and answers from Dr. M. C. Patel. Yeah, thank you, Shanta, madam, for the opportunity. Uh, though we're at the end of the program, and sir has almost covered all the topics. I don't know how many questions are remaining for me to ask because all the medical scenarios he, he has covered. Uh -huh. Since you have given me that opportunity and the task, let me take it forward and do my best as far as possible. Uh, uh, coming to the uh, question, sir, can I start, Dr. Oh, yeah. Patel, sir? Oh, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, sir, Madam has Dr. Shanta, Madam has given me a few questions. Let us finish on those questions first. And uh, the question uh, first. Uh, see, Dr. Rekha, actually, those questions reflect my knowledge of the POXO, yeah, which yeah. is very, very, very minimum. Yes. Just, just I thought I have yes, to put yes. some questions. But yes, if we are having so many questions, so I thought better not to put. Okay, you proceed. No, but certain questions are, sir, has already covered out of that. Anyway, so the first question, sir, madam has given is how to tackle the victim's mental pressure. Like as we do, doctors do the very beginning examination, counseling, take her uh, into confidence, everything. How does our mental counseling starts? How do we try to make her safe? mentally and uh, more comfortable as far as you can see on if you can highlight on that in particular so whenever this type of victims are brought to us for examination and for treatment and opinion naturally we start with history and if we feel that she is under much mental trauma we can have opinion from psychiatrist also we can take help from psychiatrist also and Main thing is to gain her confidence that we are there well we sir, we are there to assist her, we are there to help her, to treat her in that very given situation. And building that confidence, we can proceed accordingly. And examine her with her approval, whom she feels yes. very comfortable. Yes, yes. Mother, aunt, whoever. <laughs> Yes, thank you, sir. Now, what are the approved ways to confirm the sexual penetration? You had told us about the punishment on that, but can you just tell us the approved ways to confirm the sexual penetration? Like on so, examination, how do we make out? So on penetration? examination, if any injury mark or so, 
uh, it, it can be concluded. But here in definition of penetrative sexual offense, nowhere it is written that it should be full penetration. Mere small penetration is also uh, enough to conclude uh, with the uh, uh, decision uh, as far as case of to be penetrative sexual or offense. So in this situation, history from patient, I mean child, is also very much important. And many a time we may not have some uh, signs as far as our examination part is concerned. There could not be a sign as far as penetrative part is concerned. But if at all, it is a full penetration or so, there is injury mark or uh, there is some uh, application of uh, some lubricant or saliva or uh, uh, a semen uh, 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 inside, then these are the confirmative uh, uh, signs as far as penetrative sexual assault part is concerned. So as you say, suppose it's a very minor form of penetration where there is no injury or any other evidence. Yeah, then also you know, it, is it, is, yes. it is also offense. Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. Sir, one more question is, is two finger test applicable and what is the stand or the opinion of Supreme Court on that? Supreme Court has in one of the cases, he, <clears throat> there was observation on part of Supreme Court at the time of examination, patient should be comfortable. It was very, very important thing. Patient should be comfortable. And during my talk also, I have mentioned that patient should be comfortable all the time of examination. And if at all she is not comfortable, if she refuses for examination, we have to withdraw. We have to abandon the examination also. And as far as two finger test is concerned, now it is not recommended. But with simple examination, if you can come to know or come to conclusion that if she is a uh, case of uh, sexual assault, then no need to go for. And if sedation is required, I mentioned during talk also, or some anesthesia is required with uh, consent of guardian, we can go with anesthesia also and we can examine. But it is not necessary that we should go with two finger test. The patient should be comfortable at the time of examination. It is the requisite as far as this examination part is concerned. Thank you, sir. Sir, one more question which I have to you is, uh, like certain cases, as you have mentioned, the patient or her mother refused to in for us to inform the police. Mm. They're not ready. They have escaped the scene and they've gone away. Mm. And we have informed the police. Mm. And uh, will there be any problem? And is there any extra precaution we have to take to ourselves so that a, as a, an anticipatory or a precautionary way, we are protecting ourselves? Yes. So in any case, not for POXO, if at all we are in apprehension that there could be some mob violence or physical assault, we have to inform police for protection also. But when in this type of situation we inform police, we are informer, we are not complainant. We have to yes. simply inform that patient so and so, aged so and so, residing at, had been to me. And during my examination, I could find that she is preg having pregnancy by six weeks, it becomes a case of POXO. We are informing. We have, yes. we have not to advise police what to do. That is their, their role. But once we have informed police, then police will uh, come in action. Then it is all likely that patient's relative may go uh, 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 and uh, uh, come to hospital and make some nuisance. So in this situation, we can again ask to the police for protection also. And when we inform, at the same time also we can inform that if at all it happens, you be ready to protect us also in this situation. And probably the additional safety measure what we can take is take their consent that they are not ready to take any further treatment or refuse to inform us to inform police or we writing when they are negative consent like patient is not ready to take any treatment but, but from our to, side. To, to inform police, their consent is not at all required. Legally, okay. it is willingness on part of patient or patient party okay. or consent on part of patient or patient party not okay. at all required to inform police. Right. So legally, we are totally safe, but as far as this type of social problems are concerned, we should be careful. Correct. Fine. Uh, Shanta, madam, rest of the questions, I think, sir, has answered already. Uh, One, the question. Questions. One question. 
Yes. Uh, is uh, consent of a child a validity defense against sexual offenses? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't follow. Is consent of a child uh -huh. can become a defense against sexual offenses? Sir, consent he, of a child for uh, the sexual, for sexual offense. Yes, yeah, it, it is very clear. When she is more than 12 years, of course, she is minor, less than 18. But in eye of law, she is considered as a matured minor. This is terminology, matured minor. So she can take decision for examination. She can give consent for examination. But if at all we have to go for any surgical intervention, say for example, she, if she is bleeding and we have to go for suturing, then she cannot give consent. So in this situation, because it is an invasive procedure. In this situation, consent of guardian is very much required. So it is very clear in uh, this POXA Act also. Sir, my, my question is not that. Question so, is, if the defense means hmm. the offenders, they produce a consent from the uh, victims hmm. that she has consented for the no, sexual. No, no, no. It is not valid consent. Yeah. Because pers any person less than 18 years cannot give consent for intercourse. Correct. So even yeah. if she has given consent, that very consent is not valid in eye of law. So okay. it cannot be defense. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Sir, uh, sir, what is sexual harassment and what is sexual assault? I, I mentioned in my talk also, as far as harassment is concerned, no need to touch patient. It is simply uh, uh, uttering some word showing some object. Uh, uh, so th these are the kinds uh, are sexual harassment. And as far as sexual assault is concerned, here no need to go for penetration. Simply touch. Touch is to breast, vagina, penis, or child. Or make child to do so with any other person or with that very person. These are form of sexual assault. Uh, sir, I don't know whether you covered this last question yeah. of mine. What are the amendments in the POXO Act that have come or evolved over the time? So, it, yes, covered. The amendment came in 2018 and 19, I mentioned during my talk right. also. So, one part was in amendment, whichever fine is collected from accused will be given to victim for right. medical treatment and for rehabilitation part, one, one part. One stringent uh, uh, amendment came, just I mentioned, under section 376 D and B, uh, if she is less than uh, 16 and one or more than one persons are involved in act, then all will be punished and not less than uh, 20 years or even life imprisonment also in, in that very uh, uh, act. And when she is less than 12, sorry, uh, for uh, more, less than 16, more than 12, uh, 10 years plus, and if she is less than 12 years, then all the persons involved will be punished for life imprisonment or even 20 years. And in few of the cases, they have been given death sentence also. If after this act, if they have murdered uh, that uh, very victim, then it becomes a stringent one. And uh, death sentence can also be uh, avoided. Yeah, so I these heard, were amendments. I heard all that, but I did not register that they were the yeah. amendments. Yes, I, I, in 2019 it was mentioned. Okay, okay, fine. That I didn't register. Fine. Thank you, sir. Madam, any questions or anything in the chat box? Nothing particular I can find. Okay. If any delegate have any question, if there is, and we are ready to answer. Madam, there is one question in the chat box. You can take it. Is it compulsory that female should see or any CDD? The I, I mentioned has that, answered that. I, yeah. I, if, if female doctor is available, then it is preferred. Yes. Under, under POXO's uh, as, as section 27, it is mentioned. It is preferred. But yeah. say, for example, if she is bleeding. And at primary health center, if she is brought to uh, center and there is only male doctor on duty and if she is bleeding, what, what he, will have, uh, he will do? Naturally, he has to treat the patient. And before you treat the patient, naturally, you have to examine patient. So he will examine, he will uh, note all the injury mark. 
he will treat patient and he will inform police but in big hospital when male and female both doctors are available then female doctor is to be preferred for examination yeah you have already answered that yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, only I think uh, Dr. MC, in yes. that case, the, there should be female attendant hmm. with right. that yeah. particular male. Yes. Doctor. That, yes. that, is, that is required not for POC. So even for our simple examination in our day-to-day -day practice, being a male doctor, it is very much required that there should be one female nurse and one female attendant of the patient. It is very much required. In <laughs> fact, uh, many of you probably may not be knowing once uh, when Dr. Duru was actually president, we used to conduct one activity, examination of rape victim. Mm -hmm. And I delivered that talk in Vijapur, I still remember. And so many practitioners were so happy to understand how to collect evidence and what to do and all those things. So it's very important to know, not only there by government. There is doctors. a government manual yes. how to examine rape victim or sexual assault victim and which, uh, which are the evidences we have to go for collection as far as this concern. And there is a prescribed kit also. In government hospital, it is always there. In, in that very kit, all the necessary uh, instrument for examination, even comb is also there in that very kit. If you have yes. to collect pubic hair, then comb is also there in that very kit. Yes. And so all the bottles in which you have to collect uh, uh, some and specimen and also. So it is there. Uh, that, yeah, that was uh, supported by Sehat. Sehat is an NGO. They used to distribute those kits in those yes. days. Yes. And fortunately, my committee was one of the part of that particular uh, activity. And eventually, government took over it as a total owners. Yeah. Uh, Shanta, madam, there is one more question to you. Last to sir. In my MLC case, I have initiated the termination of pregnancy with consent of the mother, then informed the police two days late. Is this a major mistake? Dr. Kubra Sultana is asking, sir. Yes, yes. So in this type of situation, when patient is minor, you can terminate pregnancy if your center is registered, if you are a qualified person with consent of guardian. But product of conception is to be handed over to the police. So when you inform police, you have to hand it over this product of conception to the police for evidence. And in this situation, before patient leaves your premises, you are under obligation to inform. Because you inform after two days. So many a time, police may harass you. That why you didn't inform police. There was malintention on your part to hide the thing. Now it, it has become evident uh, and that is why only you have informed police. So not to face this type of problem, you are under obligation to inform police if it is possible before termination of pregnancy that, that uh, this type of patient had been to me and it becomes a case of POXO and I am going to terminate her pregnancy at on. <coughs> so we have to give all information. Please send your representative to collect product of conception. And we have to preserve product of conception in saline, not in formalin. Usually we uh, preserve in um, formalin in other uh, uh, cases. But in this, we have to preserve in normal saline. And if police doesn't turn up for collection of product of conception, again, we will have to inform police that you have failed to collect product of conception Hereby, you are requested to collect it well in time. Because after 72 hours, if police has not collected, then it, it, it becomes useless. Even if you are preserved, then also it will, uh, will be useless as far as DNA testing is concerned. So, it should be collected well in time and it should be sent for DNA testing well in time. But this is duty on part of police. We have to inform them well in time. Sir, what, what I think, why should we make hurry to do the MTP as, a, as an OBGY and we should inform the police first and they yes, yes. ourselves and yes. then go for the MTP? No, we have to inform, but many times, say for example, if she is bleeding and we have to go for DNA or so. In this situation, before patient leaves our premises, we have to inform and we have to end it over product of conception to the police. Otherwise, MTP is not an emergency. 
So we have to do all the formality and then we can plan termination of pregnancy. And we can inform, just I mentioned prior also, that we are going to terminate pregnancy of this very patient at 2 p.m. on this date, etc. And we request police to uh, send representative to collect product of conception. That's good, sir. At this situation, nothing extra she can do. She can inform the police and that's it. Yes. yes. Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. So, all thank the you. questions over? Yes. And all the, the questions chat. over now? So, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th chat box, everything finished. Hey. Thank ah. you, Prasoga and public awareness. Sir, 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 one minute. Santa, madam. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to Thanksgiving now. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> this is all on my, my part. Thank you for involving me. Thank so, you, sir. I, am, I didn't ask the extra questions because they have sir has already covered. I didn't want to repeat those questions. Yeah, yeah, he has covered all those uh, whatever mm -hmm. one OBGY requires yeah, in our I, practice. I, I, I had covered all the situation. Yeah. Yes. The, we yes. face in our day-to-day -day practice. Correct. Hmm. So I am really, now we'll come to the concluding and Thanksgiving last part of today's webinar. And uh, I am really, really thankful to Kasoga who has made the Zoom platform available to all the all the Kasoga uh, office bearers and uh, chairpersons. And that's how today's webinar was possible. And uh, I thank Dr. Vidya, President of Kasoga, Dr. Rajeshri Paladi, Ordinary Secretary of Kasoga, Dr. M. C. Patel, sir, without whom today's webinar was not possible because it was a medical legal series and the important chapter Foxo was there. And uh, he really elaborated very nicely. And uh, though he has given all the case scenarios, the last one uh, interaction with Dr. M. C. Patel that was very important. And because usually what we do, we do a common mistake that we preserve the uh, whatever POCs or what that in the formalin. But here we came to know, and it was very clear to us that these POCs should be preserved in normal saline. That is very important take home message for all the OBGYNs. And then I am really thankful to Dr. Nirin Shah who has given his time, even though he was abroad and he was very busy. And he's, as usual, he is very helpful and a very nice person. Uh, so I am having uh, connectivity with him for long, last yes. so many years. And really, really, sir, I am really thankful to you. And uh, I am thankful to Dr. Shaila Jai, ma'am, who has, uh, once we approach them, these all people, they, are, they were so eager and so cooperative. Uh, they, uh, they joined immediately and they cooperated with a very nice way. And Dr. Rekha Rajendra Kumar, Really, I appreciate your uh, activeness and your eagerness. And uh, I actually, uh, I, I did not expect so much from you, but really it is very, very uh, nice cooperation between uh, you and me. And uh, like that, actually, I have to thanks to the, all those delegates who have joined today for this important session. Thank you, Kasoga. And main thing is Arun, Kasoga of uh, office, Mr. Arun, who has taken the responsibility of admin and who has technically helped to conduct this webinar today. So, thank you all and thank you all once more. Thank you. Thank Madam, you, Madam, one thank more, you one more announcement before you Hi. close. Sir is conducting regularly Happy Learning webinar series, as all of you know, every Tuesday and also sometimes on Thursday also, where he covers all these medical legal aspects. And uh, in the last, there's a fourth round that is going on. And in this round, sir has taken the onus of doing the reverse panel other than his one talk. So uh, you can tell all the contacts and we also provide the recorded version of that at the end of the talk, which is very helpful for those who have not logged in and also the postgraduate stu students. So everything is covered and uh, all can have the benefit of that. Yeah, yeah. you send the, whatever that, uh, this is yes, webinar or uh, this is the new program? This is, this is webinar every webinar. Tuesday under yeah. the title of Happy Learning Masterclass Web Series. Yeah. And so, Previously, we were doing three talks and one panel, and out of those three talks, one uh, talk happened to be of medical legal. But with fourth round, we have completed three rounds with all the society of Foxy. 
and now we are we are in fourth round and in fourth round there is one talk on any clinical topic and reverse panel on medical legal say for example consent so exclusively we discuss consent mtp act oxo act uh, cpa act uh, uh, death on table then it to court doc doc documentation so, uh, exclusively on documentation whichever question you want to ask you can ask and i will be answering so that way we conduct and it is every tuesday so if you are interested we can share link also for yeah. the same. please share the link doctor yes. vikas yes. i yes. will yes. ask yes. our uh, members Once to you register madam every week you will automatically yeah. get the information to login yeah, yeah. 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 yes and uh, the, this is the medical legal uh, series of kasoga this is the first episode we are going to plan for the second episode of uh, on mtp and uh, soon we'll uh, see each other and uh, i will hopefully uh, wait for the second series of uh, second episode of medical legal series thank you and thank you all thank you so much madam thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you sir for that lucid talk thank you all thank thanks you. dr mc patel sir so thank many you. thanks to you welcome welcome yeah. always thank welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All the best for your future uh, wise uh, presidentship. I, I I seek your yes. uh, support, help, blessings, which you okay. call for the post of president boxing. Okay, sir. All the best. Thank you. All Thank the best, sir. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.